Good afternoon. Welcome to my pre-class video series for Intermediate Financial Accounting 2. Today we're going to take a look at earnings per share and I'm going to cover a couple examples for you. A couple things that I want to make sure you're clear about before you come to class so that class will be a great experience for you and you'll really understand earnings per share very, very well. Let's get started. Our first example. Now, calculating EPS, pretty straightforward. Net income divided by the number of shares. That's your earnings per share. Well, it's not quite as simple as that when you get to this level. Here's our information. Here's our number of shares. What we have to do is we've got to basically look at some very important information. So in this example, the number of shares is a million. Pretty straightforward, one million shares. What is the net income amount available to the common shareholders? Is it as easy as the four million? No. What we have to recognize is that first right of dividends go to the preferred dividend shareholders. So we have to take the net income, subtract out the preferred dividends. This is often forgotten on tests and quizzes. You're going to get into the diluted EPS calculations. They're going to be tricky. You're going to spend a lot of time understanding those. And you'll forget about preferred dividends. So why I'm emphasizing this, and I'll emphasize it in class so many times, is let's try not to forget this. Let's try not to forget the preferred dividend effect. So this will give us now our answer of 3.9500. Always take your answer to four decimals when doing EPS chapter. Always four decimals. It's really straightforward. Just always go to four decimals. So again, key thing, let's not forget to take out preferred dividends from our net income in our numerator here. Second part, our second example. Our second example involves the bottom part of the equation, the number of shares. Well, what share number do I use in this very simple example? I have 120,000 shares at the beginning of the year. I then issue 30,000 more shares. I then later on buy back 45,000 shares. So is it my ending number? Is it my beginning number? Is it something in between? Something in between. We have to calculate this using what is referred to as the weighted average method. So let me just go through how to do that with you right now. So I'm going to set this up under months. So what period did we have nothing change? January to basically February. So January to February, nothing changed. So our shares were 120,000. Our portion of the year was 2 twelfths. So therefore, our weighted number is 20,000. That's how you do your first row calculation. Now, we need to go and do the next one. We need to take a look at what changed as of March 1st? Well, we issued 30,000 more shares. So from March onwards, we had 150,000 shares. Now, how do you calculate the number of months here? And as I've said in class a number of times, this is the secret. Use these fingers of yours. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, do we count October? Yes, we do, because it's October 31st. So we're going to have eight months there. So we're going to have March to October. So when I put this here, I usually say that it's the full month of October. That's 8 twelfths. That's 100,000 shares now. And then November and December, we had 45,000 shares repurchased. So from November to December, our balance was 105,000. So here it grew 30,000, 
Here it subtracted out 45,000. That's 2 twelfths. Now again, we're done. How many months are in the year? 2 plus 8 plus 2, 12. Woo! We'll even put a smiley face there. Do not be the person who has this equal 13 or 11. I've seen that too many times. So double check your calculations. Use these wonderful fingers that you've been given to calculate your months and just go slow. This will be 17,500. So our weighted number, 137,500. That's how you start and come up with your calculation for the weighted average number of shares. So again, spend a little time on this. I always encourage you to be the teacher. Create your own little questions so that this sinks in. And when you come to class, we'll spend a little bit more time on this and you'll be very comfortable when we move forward to the intermediate and advanced material. Have a good day, everyone.